than James Phelan, magician, BBC radio presenter and host of the very successful Celebrity Phone Box podcast. He's currently filming a show for Prime Video and tickets for his national tour are on sale now. It's called <laughs> The Greatest Magician. An evening of wonders. And let me tell you, this man has pedigree too. He is Paul Daniels and Debbie McGee's nephew, but he's very much charting his own course in the world of magic. And he joins me now. Great to have you in the studio. Thank you very much for having me. Why are you a magician? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, the truth of it is, I, th I think you're a magician for one of two reasons, really. Um, a lot of magicians are magicians because they like the secrets mm. and the society of it, I suppose. Whereas I just, I'm a magician because I like this being centre of attention. That's the, that's right. the truth so of it. So for you, it's just a case of, it's an entertainment uh, it's a genre. Yeah. You've got an audience, you make them laugh, you surprise them. Yeah, I, the truth of it is, it's all I've ever wanted to do. Mm. And I remember from when I was zero years old, like I was probably two years old and going to the theatre and my brother was a bit too young and my cousins are the opposite right I mean I know you mentioned my auntie and uncle so the, the family is either into it or the opposite right and so it was all I ever wanted to do and I was four and a half years old and I was at school and I said to my teacher what she said to me, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I said, I want to do magic. And she said to me, you'll never make anything of yourself doing that. So here we are. And uh, <laughs> How it, long she was. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. And so the, She's the, probably watching now, oh, eating her words. She's bought a ticket to the show. It was the, it was the weirdest thing. Really? I was sat on stage. I, I have this real like, problem with waffling. Like I talk a load of just nonsense the whole way through the show. I know that like, problem. <laughs> just like, but it's, it's great, right? It's the, it's, and this is what's been really nice since we've got back in the theatre is having a connection with the audience. You know, you're sat in a room and there's 500 people in there and we're all experiencing the same thing at the same time. And I was sat on the stage kind of like this and I looked in the front row and there was the teacher and it was it was just like having Mickey Mouse in the front row. It was the most awful Completely thing. throwing you. Did she have her arms folded? Uh, did she whisper, see me, halfway through the show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. No, she. I, I did a routine to wind her up, is the truth of it. I went back in the interview and I thought, what can I do? That's amazing. Um, and so I stopped her being able to read and then made her forget her own name. which is. So you, did you out her? You said, I've got to tell you, the person on the front row is my former school teacher. Is that how you did it? I don't remember. This was, this was just after my Uncle Paul died. So what happened was um, I had a full-time job and the people I worked for, when my Uncle Paul got poorly... I said to them, I need to take some time off. And they said, you can't. And I said, well, I resign. And I just have done this pretty much every day since then, mm -hmm. bar a year and a half in the middle that we don't talk about. Yeah. And uh, uh, this was six months after. And it was, it was my first sold out show. And, but it's obviously five years ago now. It's, it's remarkable. Amazing. And I'm convinced your dad would be, uh, sorry, your dad, uh, your, your, your uncle would be very, very proud. That's how rumours start, Mark. Oh, well, I know, that. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very close family, close knit. Um, and look, here you are charting your own course, and it's a remarkable skill. So tell me about the live show. I mean, that's a big commitment, isn't it? It's the most stress. It's the most fun, but it's the most stress. And I, we had, we had a handful of shows in in sort of March 2020 that all got put in the bin. Devastating. Uh, and it's, the hardest bit was the unknown. Once they're gone, you know they're gone. It's the, it's the sort of the bit in the middle that's the stress. Yeah. And we just, it was sort of the middle of last year. I thought, I'm we're just gonna go in. And we've got 55 dates in and it's just, they're everywhere. So um, the first show back is in Dunstable, which is the Grove. Uh, if anyone's in that neck of the woods, but it's everywhere. It's from Scotland downwards. I did, yeah. I did Cumbria day one and Weymouth day two a like, week just before last. Spectacular. And I'm a just... lot of travel. Yeah, <laughs> big carbon footprint. But I mean, what a show! It's getting rave reviews. I mean, could you possibly give us a flavour of what you're doing in the show? I would love to. Now, this is this is interesting, right? Because your uh, your sort of start of the segment for want of a better turn of phrase, talks about sleight of hand. And people always talk about sleight of hand, but there's more to it than that. Because this is a pack of cards, right? Uh, what's the best way to do it? If I show this to the camera, mm. it, we can see them, right? Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show this to you. What I want you to do is to think of anyone you like, but the important part is you remember whereabouts it is. So tell me when you've got one. OK. Have you got one? Yes. Are you thinking of a high card? No. So that's... This is what I think. Your card you're thinking of is less than five. Yes, it is. What card are you thinking of? It is a two of... Uh, I think... Uh, I've got to remember what a club looks like. I think it's... I always mix up the club and the spade. I'm the worst I'll, person to do this with. Have a look. It's that... That is... That is the card. 
That's the card I was thinking of. I'll show you How one. You, by the way, is that a spade or a club? That's a spade. There you go. It's you can always spade. tell the clubs because they look like dinosaurs' feet. Oh, if you put that there, that's brilliant. what I tell kids. Anyway, children. That, that is ridiculous. It gets better. I don't know how you've done I'll that. show you something similar. Just This is something. Just take this however you like, Mark. This is something I'd show the kids. You're scaring me already. You I, know that. I did, a, I did a routine. I did this. Uh, this. The truth of this, Mark, is I was interviewing Christopher Biggins, right, mm. in a situation similar to this. You're living the dream, aren't you? Oh, I know. It's, it's tough at the top. And uh, you know what it's like when you have someone in your ear and you go, we've got some problems with the cameras. You're going to have to <laughs> no, fill No, luckily it. that doesn't happen at GB News. Oh, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, BBC Radio Berkshire is a slightly different thing, I guess. But uh, we, I had to make something up. And what I made up was the thing that I'm about to show you because annoyingly it went down far better than everything that I had planned. So again, we use the camera. What I'll do is if I go to this camera here, yeah. I will riffle these down and everyone can see these, right? Yeah, different cards. What, what I'm going to get you to do for me, Mark, is I want you to tell me when to stop whenever you like. So okay. tell me when. Stop. That's your card. Take it. What is Please it? Please don't tell me. If it's the it's two, not the two of spades. Don't worry, it's not the two of spades. I'll, I'll send you home. Oh my gosh, okay, so it's the four of diamonds. Perfect, put it back. Right, four of diamonds. Four of diamonds is what we're avoiding. Now let's shuffle these up. Let's four do it like this. I know oh. what diamond looks like. There it is. Okay. Let's do this. Let's give them a shuffle. I'll give them a okay. proper shuffle. Yeah. See, there's nothing dodgy going on here. I'm, I'm but immediately when you say there's here. nothing dodgy, everyone thinks there's something dodgy. <laughs> so tell me when, Mark. Stop. Now, do you want that one or do you want to change your mind? No, I'm a man of conviction. Let's go Are you that. sure? Yeah, I Have think Have a look, so. tell me what it is. Okay, so I had the four of diamonds. This wouldn't be possible, so... He's only gone and done. Now, it is the four of diamonds. That might be a coincidence, though, Mark. So one more time, put it back. Same thing again. We'll shuffle them up. Let's do it like this. Is this real? No, same thing again. Tell me when to stop. Stop. Do you want that one? Or that one? Or do you want to change your mind? Well, I guess... It's up to you. No, I, I fancy having another roll of the dice. Tell me when. Stop. Do you want that one or do you want to change your mind? I'll have another roll of the dice. Tell me when. Stop. Do you want that one or do you want to change your mind? I want that one. Third time, lucky. And there it is. <laughs> it is the four of diamonds. Uh, you are either a man of religious powers or spiritual powers. Um, it's incredible. Or I need a hobby on a Sunday night, I think. That's yeah, probably I, what I, it I, is. Is I, any of it a sort of natural, innate skill? Are some magicians like yourself sort of born with a talent? Or is it just, is it hard work? Is it elbow grease? Um, a bit of both, I think. Mm. Uh, like, like anything, the the secret of the magic is not the secret of the magic, right? It's that you could give anyone a sheet of jokes and not everyone's going to be Billy Connolly, right? Correct. And, it's, and it's, it's, a, it's a similar thing. It's my show is a, is a party with the audience and we go on and we have an amazing time and this stuff is amazing and that's, that is a box that has to be ticked, but that's only the first step on the ladder. And the rest of it just comes down to sheer perspiration of doing the show 2,000 times. Well, you, you're um, one of the most in-demand magicians in the world now, which is just incredible. How, how much of it is like a comedian where you've got to work on new material? Do, are you always developing new tricks? Where do they come from? The hardest thing with it, Mark, is I've had... This is probably my third day off since May, which is... Right. I mean, I'm not going to complain about it because it's, it's a blessing, really. Mm. And I would imagine you did online magic throughout the did pandemic. did a bit. Mm. I liked it, actually, because the intimacy of having someone screen there and your face here. Yes. But the problem with that is you then don't have any time to think about anything, yeah. like any kind of social life, any kind of magic. So it's, it's the real juggling act. So most of my brainstorming is in the car <laughs> on the way oh, to places. Oh, we, we, we all do that. Oh, I get my best ideas in the car and I forget them. <laughs> uh, well, listen, I won't forget those tricks. That is truly remarkable. Uh, under the pressure of live television cameras, you nailed it. I don't know how you did it. You're a strange and demonic human being, but a talented well, one too. Yeah, don't you make me blush. I tell you what, do you want to do one more quick one? Shall Have I? Have you got time for a quickie? <laughs> I've always got time for a quickie. Um, OK, I do this thing on my show where I tap into people's imaginations, right? And people at home can do this as long as they're not driving, but why would they be? Yeah. Um, where the better, uh, the, the quicker this works for you, the better your imagination is, mm -hmm. right? So if you put your hands out like this, yep. and you put your hands out like this, yep. and you link your hands as tight as you possibly can, yep. you put your hands up almost like you're praying, and you take your two fingers, put them about an inch apart, and you stare through the middle, and I want you to imagine there's a magnet that starts to pull them closer and closer and closer. Now, you're not doing that on purpose, are you? Um, I'm just allowing myself to be suggested. And then they do that, and then they touch. Very good, well done. Same thing again. If you do this, put your hands out like this. Put your arms out straight, 
And this time I want you to imagine there's a magnet here and there's a magnet there. And as I start to click my fingers, you'll start to feel your hands moving closer and closer and closer. Now, you've got a fantastic imagination. You and I have never met before, have we? No. You had no idea that this was going to happen. How long have we got? We've got... Have I got... 60 um, seconds? 60 seconds. 90 seconds? I do that. I'll, I'll show you one of these, or uh, maybe two of these. This is... Uh, if you take a deep breath in for me, Mark, and breathe out, these are words. Every, no. Relax your hands. Now, the, the, the sort of hard work's done. Focus on that word for me, and I want you to tell me very loud, very clear, what does it say? Apple sauce. If you show... The, oh, the camera can see it over your shoulder. One more time. Apple sauce. Just to be clear, that doesn't say applause, does it? No, it says apple sauce. OK, good. Next sauce. one, put it down. This one is the same. If I show this to the camera, the camera can see it. Same thing to you. Very loud, very clear. What does it say? Dumb plug. Dumb, dumb plug. plug. That de how are you spelling that with a D or a oh, B? Oh, sorry. Dumb plug. Dumb plug. <laughs> D-U-M-P-L-U-G. That does not say dancing? No, it does not say Are you dumb convinced? Plug. Perfect. If you put that down, take a deep breath in for me. Have you hypnotised me? It's far more clever than that. Oh, gosh. When do we get the real me back? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea, but thank you so much for having me on. It's a real treat to be here. I need a lie that. down now. I need <laughs> sure, smelling I'll salts. So I'll go over there and I'll do the rest what's of the show. The, yeah, well, uh, maybe I can watch ratings go through the roof. What's the antidote? Can you click me out of it now? I, that leads on to other stuff with the show. So if we were on a stage, yeah. you'd be stuck for a while. I genuinely feel hypnotised and also hugely impressed. What a talent. I appreciate that. Um, the show. Give us the name of the uh, It's called The Greatest podcast. Magician. If you go to greatestmagiciantour.com, you can get tickets. Uh, or you can find me on Instagram, which is at Feeling Magician. Amazing stuff. Well, as you will have seen, that show's got to be seen.